the Irrational Confidence Podcast. Everyone wants to talk about the Texas Longhorns being back fresh. I got to say, I think the Nebraska Cornhuskers may be back now, Ryan, Dylan, Riola. The Illinois Fighting Illini, they're traveling to Lincoln, Nebraska. They're 3-0. and Nebraska's 3-0. and At time of record, Nebraska is a nine-point home favor. Over under in this game is a little on the low end, I thought. 43 and a half there. Fresh, what do you got, Illinois, Nebraska? Well, I think it's great having Nebraska back. Um, you know, too. you kind of look at it. What Matt Rule does, I think we all kind of saw this going to happen. But Matt Rule takes programs over. He might not be able to coach in the NFL, but the Carolina Panthers are a whole other dumpster fire. You know, it's with or without him. Um, but right. what he did at Baylor, what he did at Temple, me taking historically stagnant programs and made them good. Now, Baylor was good, and they had a huge issue, obviously, scandals and fell off, and he got them back. And now doing it at Nebraska, where they have a passionate fan base, a Amazing history, but they haven't really been much of anything in, what, 10 years? Um, I think the last big game they had was the Capital One Bowl versus Georgia to cap off the 2012 season, then Orlando. Um, seeing that program find itself, rewarding the hard work they put in, having some pride, um, being built on the toughness and what this is, like, program has been built on forever. Toughness and running the football, and then obviously Dylan Rail at quarterback, giving them that hope. Um, it's something I think everyone kind of hoped that Scott Frost would have brought. And he brought more of the flash attempt as opposed to the gritty, hard work, line of scrimmage, punch you in the mouth, bring your lunch pail kind of mentality that Matt Rule has, and instilling a pride and, and a work ethic. And that's going to come into play. Brent Beal has done the same thing at Illinois. Again, building a program that most people overlook in the Big Ten. You know, they, that, you know, 2007, they had a great year, went to the Rose Bowl. It may have been a laughing stock ever since. And he's kind of got them back the past couple of years developing players like, you know, Witherspoon at corner, um, some other guys from the secondary there, so that, you know, past couple Illini defenses. Building up from the ground up, getting people to believe in the program, not really dominating the transfer portal, recruiting and developing, recruiting, developing, um, and they're showing how you can actually do it at these schools where they don't may, maybe not have the total NIL money or have had a little lock of, a lack of luster and they've had to build from the ground up, they've done it. And now this is a showcase. This is kind of a reward for all that hard work. Friday night, Fox, national telecast, everybody watching. Memorial Stadium there in Lincoln is going to be rowdy. Um, and it kind of just brings back some nostalgia for the old Big Ten where it's going to be a, a brawl. You mentioned the you know the over-under there. I got a feeling it's not it's one score. You kind of look at what Illinois has done. They haven't really scored many points. They got a pick six and got some great turnovers with Kansas to beat them, but they didn't exactly score 35, 40 points. They played great defense. They got to really shut down Jalen Daniels. Um, and then Nebraska took care of their opponents, did what they had to do. They absolutely physically manhandled Colorado. And then here they are, so where do you know? You're going to see a brawl. Um, Luke Altmaier last year was kind of hit or miss for the Illini quarterback. This year, 647 passing and uh, six touchdowns, off to a solid start. Jacari Franklin, now that name might pop if you listen to the podcast for a while, had two back to, about to back thousand yard receiver, uh, re- receiving yard seasons and 10 plus touchdowns at UTSA. With Frank Harris. Last year with Ole Miss, barely even played, got injured, had to deal something for himself back in the portal. And now it's going to be a receiving flip for the Illini. I'm waiting him for him to break out. He has 100, uh, 16 catches, 193. I'm waiting for that him to, to sort of get that offense flow and find his groove again because he has shown the slash of the potential in the past. And he could be a very important player, not just in this ballgame, but for the future for the Illini program. Um, you kind of look at Rayola. Well, he's gotten himself settled in. He's, he, he's, I guess he's accepting the hype. He's accepting the responsibility. He hasn't made too many mistakes yet. The Colorado game, I kind of thought, all right, would that game, the environment, the hype, maybe he had him on target up there and compete with Shador, or he make some mistakes and make some bad throws. He settled in, he played the game plan, and they're doing a really good job of giving him easy throws, letting his offensive line protect him, and making it simple for him to make the right decision and not putting it on his shoulders. I got a feeling you're going to see a lot more of that tonight, uh, Friday night. He's going to just be under control, make the simple throws, get the first downs, move the chain, let the running game dictate for him. And then eventually, when you have to make the big third down throw, he has the skills to get it done. Um, I think he's going to be the deciding factor. I don't think Illinois has enough offense. They're going to have to, you know, going against the defense, can be able to shut them down and get a play of their strengths. I think at the end, Nebraska feels off of, feels off of the crowd, feels off the environment, being back to being ranked. Because also, this is a back ranked ranked matchup. I just think that's going to be the carrying factor. 
you're going to see the Brassett team with the slights in front of them. They're going to win this game like a 27-17, 27-14 ball game. Um, and they'll get a late touchdown to really make it a little different, but it'll be a brawl the entire time. They'll go back and forth, back and forth, a lot of punts, a lot of great tackling, but Nebraska will win. But it'll be a lot of fun watching on, on Friday night. Bryce, you like that nine that nine points Nebraska's given? Um, we'll see. Huskers have allowed twenty points total in three games, so that's going to be a scoring. Um, they're not going to they're not going to give it many points. In a line, I have allowed twenty six points. Like I feel like that's going to be a low scoring part right there. Um, I still think the nine's going to get done. I just don't trust the Illini offense. I think Illinois Illinois is not going to be able to get enough points, and Nebraska being at home. We'll be able to cover that 10. I think the nine has to be a 10, and uh, they'll, they'll, they'll squeak through. Right. You kind of bring up an interesting point, which is what I wanted to bring with Nebraska here. Everyone's going to talk about Dylan Rayola, the offense, how it's looked so much better this year, all the things that Matt Rule has done, bringing Nebraska back from this awful Scott Frost era. And the thing that really – this is where I finally truly feel Nebraska's back. It's not the offensive side of the football. What we knew Nebraska as, not only like an option offense, but the, what was known as the black shirt defense. And if you guys are sitting there, if you're a younger Nebraska fan or if you're a younger friend in college football, you don't understand the idea of the tradition of the black shirt defense that is over at Nebraska. You need to look that up. You need to Google that and say why that was so important with their culture over there. You have seen the return of the black shirt type defense over there in Nebraska, which makes me real excited for them. That's the thing that makes me feel like this Nebraska team isn't just a flash in the pan, just isn't coming out left field, beating lesser opponents, and just running up and just throwing the football all over the place. They are smothering opponents. Nine sacks in their first three games. They got four interceptions already. You see that they're not – they haven't gotten the – um takeaways yet especially when it comes to fumbles which usually was one of the staples for Nebraska they'd hit you so so hard that you cough up the football I've been real impressed by this defense so far and that's where I'm going to really want to see this I thought that 43 and a half was a little bit lower I think that maybe I wanted it to be close to about 48 49 in my opinion there I thought maybe, again, that 27-19, 27-20 type, it was where I was feeling things with it. As for Illinois, I love that you touched on Luke Altmeyer. Last year, Luke Altmeyer couldn't take care of the football. He had 10 interceptions to 13 touchdowns. On this year alone, he has six touchdowns, zero interceptions. He's taking care of the football. He's completing almost 70% of his passes. Illinois is doing their damage on the ground. They are leaning on the running game to support the passing game in their offense here. If they can continue to do that, if they can run the football on Nebraska and like kind of let Luke Altmeyer be kind of that facilitator, get it to get it to Brian, get it to Franklin, whichever one they want to get to. Uh, you got a couple other younger guys in that receiving core there and let Figgins kind of run the football and be that point of attack of the spear for their offense this could be a really really close game Illinois got to control the time of possession they have to play defense they have to limit Dylan Rayola if Rayola starts having a big game here watch out and again my question is who's going to match up on the outside Isaiah Nair has already had a really nice start to the season there Dow is looking like a, a maybe could start to look like the next great Nebraska running back. I don't want to go like too crazy on that, but there's a lot of positivity in both of these programs that you really are hoping for a dog fight that both of these teams can walk out and say, we're going to hang our height. We went four quarters, four rounds with our team. Hey, there's got to be a winner. There's got to be a loser. There's no ties in college football. It's not the NFL. Someone's got to walk away with the the W. Someone's got to walk away with the L. But both of these teams can get the respect that they're starting to build early on this football season. I got Nebraska winning it. You know, and you come back there with respect. The Big Ten right now needs that that death of the conference. Um, You have the Ohio State. 
Obviously, they're a fantastic program. Oregon's great. USC is certainly will show they can actually play some defense. Um, Penn State, I don't think anybody truly really trusts Penn State. But then who's that next team? Right now, Michigan, like they have a three year, four year run under, you know, three year run under Harbaugh and Tyler Stallings. Um, do I trust them going forward? I haven't seen much from Sherelle Moore that really gives me that they're actually going to be truly bad. Um, I think Jonathan Smith and Michigan State, they're going to build something. It's going to take a while. Luke Sickle and Wisconsin and show me anything. So who's that next team that's going to give them that depth, that potential to get three or four into the playoff consistently? Nebraska has the fame, has the history, but can they become that true program on the field? Um, this is a chance for them to get that showcase win, a ranked win, layer it on, show me, yes, we're back. Recruits come here and play for us, and we're not going to be pushed aside or ignored anymore. We're going to be fully ready to be involved in the race. Nebraska goes to four and zero. They have a clear path to seven and zero going into Columbus. They could seriously start if they go to four and zero. Fresh, do they deserve early season playoff chatter? I think they need you know a, a marchy win. Um, I don't think Illinois would be that marchy win to really pique the interest of the committee right now, but it puts them in the conversation of being that top twenty range. Where all right. If the Big Ten's strong and they're finishing second, third, or fourth, and other leagues are, you know, I, I don't see the ACC getting more than just the champion. Um, it's just going to be the Miami, in my opinion. That's the only team that's really qualified. And if they don't win the title, that's that's open that opens up a bid. I don't think you're going to get two at group of five teams in. So it really comes down to the Big 12 beating, beating each other up or not, and SEC getting four or five teams and then getting four or five teams and where you sort of finish from that perspective. But a win here would do a it would give them something in their resume that they haven't had in a long time. Right. 